What's going on YouTube and welcome back to the channel. I hope you guys are having a great start to your Thursday. So yo, before I go any further and get into the commentary for today, I want you guys to hit that like button for you boy. You know I don't ask for much, so if you can just support the channel in that way, I would gladly appreciate it, all right? So I wanted to come on here and talk about this situation that's going down between former NBA player Kwame Brown and former NBA players Matt Barnes and Steven Jackson, and also sports analysts and sports commentators that have the same hue as I do that have always picked on Kwame Brown for his shortcomings on the basketball court, right? And just as recent as yesterday, Kwame went after the Breakfast Club because Charlemagne the God talked about Kwame's family and their past run-in with the law and detailing his family's past transgressions and Kwame thought that Charlemagne was way out of pocket for that. He also went after DJ Envy. So Kwame was drafted back in 2001 straight out of high school, 17-year-old kid he was drafted by the Washington Wizards, right? And so there was one big, huge personality and a dominant alpha male that was on the team at the time in Michael Jordan. So imagine being drafted to the Washington Wizards at 17 years old and having to deal with Michael Jordan on a day-to-day -day basis with his temperament and his will and his grit to succeed and to win. And so we all know that Michael Jordan is the ultimate competitor, right? And so with Kwame Brown being drafted number one overall to the Washington Wizards, the expectations were high. So a lot of people expected Kwame to come in dominating the league or at least show some promise in that first year. And so the word is, is Michael was extremely hard on Kwame. He talked down to him and embarrassed him in front of teammates. And so that can be extremely humiliating. And as a result, it shook his confidence and they're also saying that Michael Jordan brought Kwame to tears. Now, Kwame denied that, said Michael Jordan never brought him to tears, right? Now, with Kwame admitting that Michael Jordan was his idol, I can see how crazy it could feel to someone who's being drafted, number one, to the team that your idol plays for. And instead of you being welcomed with open arms, you being talked down to and disrespected on a day-to-day -day basis by your idol. So, of course, his confidence was shaken. He was shook it. Let's just keep it all the way real. Now, that doesn't mean that Kwame was afraid of Michael Jordan the man. He probably was just intimidated by Michael Jordan's accolades and accomplishments on and off the court. And just remember this, y'all. A lot of people don't respond to pressure well. They don't. A lot of people can thrive when they're pressured. And then a lot of people can just shut down when they're pressured. And so that seemed to be the case for Kwame. And so Kwame Brown, am I saying his name correct? Kwame, Kwame, whatever I'm saying, that's what it is today. No disrespect to the brother. I think it's Kwame. So Kwame Brown basically revealed recently that the reason why he was probably treated that way by Michael is because Michael only wanted the organization to draft him, to trade him for Elton Brand because Michael wanted to win now. Remember, Michael had came back. He was like 38, 39, trying to win another championship in Washington. So Michael didn't even want Kwame. He wanted Elton Brand because he felt that Elton Brand could have helped the Washington Wizards win now. And so imagine, again, guys, just imagine you being drafted number one overall to the team that has your idol on it and then you find out that your idol doesn't even want you there and on top of that he's disrespecting you and belittling you in front of your teammates and then just the overall pressure of being the number one draft pick you know it was just too much for that brother and so michael played for the washington wizards from 2001 to 2003 and so when Michael retired in 2003, there still was no improvement on Kwame's game, and he ended up getting traded to the Lakers in 2005. Now, who was on the Lakers with that same mentality that Michael Jordan has, and who emulated everything that Michael Jordan did on the court, from how Michael chewed his gum, to how Michael walked, to how Michael stuck his tongue out when he attacked the basket, that would be none other than Kobe being Bryant. So now you're coming from a place where you had to deal with Michael Jordan for two years. Now you're getting traded to basically deal with his son in Kobe Bryant, you know? So I just think that if Kwame was put in a better predicament or a better situation rather, where he didn't have to produce so quickly, I think that he would have been better off and that he would have had a better NBA career and his stats would have been a lot better because for his entire NBA career, he averaged 6.6 .6 points per game, 
5.5 rebounds per game and 0.9 assists. Now, me personally, I don't think Kwame Brown is a bust. This brother made it to the NBA and he played for 13 seasons and he was able to put his mom in a house on a golf course. So that's not a bust to me. Did he underachieve on the basketball court to some? But still, I can't call him a bust because he made it to a place where some people will never make it to. Now, I want to transition to Kwame Brown calling out Stephen A. Smith. Now, Kwame Brown feels that Stephen A. Smith has a battery that has been put in his back by selective media to come down on people that have the same hue as he does. And so Kwame Brown called out Stephen A. Smith for disrespecting him throughout the years through the media. So let me play you guys a couple of clips of Stephen A. going in on Kwame Brown. And in one clip specifically, you can see Jalen Rose trying to stick up for Kwame. So I want you guys to pay close attention to that one and I'll be back momentarily. How do you think Kwame Brown feels when you say Kwame? His do I get to answer way. this or are these, are these rhetorical sure, questions? Sure, go ahead. Do I get to answer it or are they just rhetorical questions? Go ahead. Let me tell you something right now. Kwame, all right, I'm gonna tell you why I say Kwame Brown or Rosho the Slava Medvedenko. Slava <laughs> Medvedenko. I'll tell you why. Because you're Kwame Brown. You're seven feet tall. You're the number one overall draft pick, okay? You come into this league, you came in without a jump shot. You came in without the ability to rebound. You came in without the ability to do nice footwork, to pass, to rebound, to defend, to score points, or whatever the case may be. And it's a decade later, and you're still that dude. You out. If a dude is playing like garbage, you don't sit there and point out he's playing like garbage? Of course I do. You don't I sit do, there and but, point out how but, he's but not the, living up to expectation? I don't want to get away from what we're talking about because th that's that's what makes this Oh, great. I'm staying I on the point. I'm right here. But I'm there, right here. there's a difference between reporting what you see in the box score at the game or calling someone a scrub. They give up too much to get a guy who has been labeled soft. Is that a trick question? You tell me. They gave up Kwame Brown. Two who first cares? rounders. I could, I could care less. I didn't do it sound more importantly. Kwame Brown is gone. The city of Angels, Hollywood, just should be celebrated. Throw a parade already, whether you win a championship or not. This man was a bona fide scrub. Oh. All right, so you guys saw what Stephen A. Smith had to say about Kwame Brown back in the days. That was just two examples. There are many, many more. Now we'll get into why he came for Stephen A. Smith and what fueled you know, his fire to go at Stephen A. a little bit later. But now what I wanna do is play you the response from Kwame Brown to Stephen A. after 15 to 20 years of Stephen A. just coming at him through the media, all right? So just sit tight and I'll be back momentarily. After now, now that I got a platform, I'm gonna use it for the right way. It's time to put respect on his name. And you know that I'm disrespecting? That's because you the one that's a gatekeeper of disrespect. Stephen A, you bald forehead, people thinking you tough. Saying all kind of shit. Like, oh, then you come see me. Well, sign up. Let's go to Seattle and you sign up. Well, Seattle, you ain't got to sign no way. Meet me in Seattle where you can have mutual contact and talk like that. Ah, s too. It'll look like you got a toupee on the front of your head or how hard I s the back of your head, mother the hell you talking about? Y'all got people fooled with this. All right, so we heard what Kwame Brown had to say in response to Stephen A for calling him a scrub and a bust for all of these years. And so we have to remember this is 15 to 20 years of built up frustration that Kwame Brown has towards Stephen A. So a fan of Stephen A's asked Stephen A, hey, you gonna respond to Kwame Brown? And this is what Stephen A said. I will do no such thing. I will not waste my time. That man is right. He's been retired for years, yet all of us are guilty of getting on him from time to time. He has every right to speak his mind. Go for it. All right, so basically Stephen A doesn't want any part of this revenge tour that Kwame Brown has going on right now. He basically admitted that he probably gotten on Kwame a little bit too hard and a little bit too much in the past. And so he said that man is retired. He has the right to say what he wants to say and it is what it is. Now, let's talk about what started this whole entire situation that woke Kwame Brown up and Kwame decided to say, hey, enough is enough. I need to speak up. I'm a man and I need to defend myself. All right, so Lakers owner Jeannie Buss was on a podcast called All The Smoke, right? That is hosted by Stephen A. Jackson and Matt Barnes. 
And so basically the conversation came up about the Kwame Brown trade to get Pau Gasol. I want you guys to check out what they had to say and how they poked fun at Kwame Brown. And it just, it was like, Did you and guys now, thank Jerry? Cause wasn't Jerry over in Memphis and gave Jerry, you guys Pau? <laughs> <laughs> well, we traded Mark, Mark Gasol, yeah, that's what people, right? People, oh, you got him for nothing. Not yeah. realizing that what you guys gave oh, yeah. him was Mark Gasol. And Kwame Brown. And yeah. so, Mark um, Gasol. And right. um, so, oh, do you played with Mark? <laughs> no, no, no. no this that was yeah. a one man trade. You just <laughs> used the name. He was that name was just there. So so now we. All right. So Jeannie Bus kept her professionalism. She acknowledged Kwame Brown as a trade piece to get Pau Gasol, and it was the two brothers and Stephen Jackson and Matt Barnes that basically said that Kwame was nothing. You know, he amounted to nothing. And so that woke Kwame Brown up and rightfully so. Now, I want to show you guys a snippet of the conversation between Matt Barnes, Stephen Jackson and Jeannie Buss. There's a part in there where Matt actually tapped Stephen Jackson on the knee to actually agree with him that the Lakers traded Kwame Brown for Pau Gasol for nothing. So check out this petty part. And this is what really got Kwame hot. What you guys gave oh, yeah. him was Mark Gasol. And Kwame Brown. And yeah. so... Mark um, Gasol. And right. um, all right, so you guys saw that pettiness between Steven Jackson and Matt Barnes. And so this is when Kwame Brown decided to go on a whole revenge tour on the Internet from YouTube to Instagram to Twitter. He was roasting them brothers from top to bottom about their personal life. And it was crazy. It was epic. It's so many clips, guys. I couldn't even give you all the clips here. I know you guys have access to the internet and so you guys can check them out for yourself on all three of those platforms but when i tell you this brother went in and is still going in right now it's completely wild you know what i'm saying so i put these clips together and these clips consist of Kwame going at you know matt barnes and stephen jackson and other people so i want you guys to sit tight all right, and enjoy the show because he puts on a show. You will also see clips of Matt Barnes and Steven Jackson actually responding back to Kwame. So you'll see that too. Trust and believe, brothers and sisters. So just sit back and I'll be back. That's okay though. And Becky with the good hair, I hope you learned your lesson, boy. You need to shut your mouth. You ain't a man amongst me. Call me Brown, Brother Brown, Brother Brown. You've been ran for about five days now. Uh, your cry for help, your need for attention has worked. I heard your Instagram following has grown over 30,000 the last handful of days since you have my, I mean, my name in your mouth. Um, but don't be fooled by this new attention, bro. All these people that are gassing you and putting a battery in your back, all the platforms that are picking you up, didn't give a about you last week, bro. They don't love you. They just love the drama <clears throat> and the old the old jokes you're saying. They don't love you. They don't love me. They don't love no one. They love the drama. That's it. But come on, all the smoke. Come talk to you face to face. You got a story to tell. Obviously, you're hurt. I mean, like I said, you you can you can play it off with humor, but you're hurt. And I get it. I mean. I'll come on the show. Talk that. Tell your story face to face. There's no bigger, better platform than ours. You can say what you want. We're an award-winning platform. We don't tear down, man. Because you're the butt of the joke. Now that, that that's what you're on. You think we're tearing down, man? But if you actually watch the show, we empower everybody. That's what our thing is. So come on the show, man. We'll be in Atlanta next month. Come to you. Uh, if me and you got a box before, during, or after. Then shake hands to get this done. You know I'm always with this. But come tell your story, man. Get that shit to your chest. Me and Renee Smith, he's almost 60 years old. He don't want to fight you, but I ain't got no issues. Like I said, I'm with this. So you can bring your hookah. You can bring that front seat of your car that you're always in, ranting about. Make yourself feel comfortable. Whatever you need to feel comfortable. But come on, all the smoke and tell your story. We'll be in Atlanta next month. Let me know what's up. Oh, look at just like Dennis the Menace. Oh, well, you know, I know you heard. I know you did. You can come on my show. Nigga, you heard. If my girl would have made me jump over a gate, 
for a house that I paid for and let him drive my truck. <laughs> you had to jump your own game. T.I. <laughs> Shut up. Don't give me no more advice, nigga. Jump his own game he paid for. Millionaire, millionaire. The game. Had a game the next day. You could have twist your ankle, you dumb. You finna the whole checkup behind it. Are y'all still together? No, you about to get married, ain't it? You dumb, emotional, gonna give some advice. Dumb, them got itself suspended because you were driving nine, ten hours speeding and crying. I can imagine you on that highway with that comb over. You were spraying activator trying to make sure you look good while you was fighting. <laughs> you were so aggressive, you probably had the key to the gate, but your pill jumped over. <laughs> so I'm going to address you directly at No Chill Gill and at Stack 5 Fake Black Lives Matter activist and it was at the same time allegedly so you just confused so I'm gonna help your little confused out just give me about three four minutes about somebody like me boy you need to stop boy I done told you you done stepped in damn quicksand boy I don't gotta lie and make up the only joke you got boy when is this basketball joke gonna run out? You keep hitting me with basketball jokes. I keep hitting you with your real s punk ass life. Now, which one didn't like you, boy? Your granddaddy that was black or your granddaddy that was black? Cause there's some deep issues in you, boy, that you can't understand what I'm trying to say. That in America right now, boy, white people are scared to talk about black people right now as a whole. Hey, niggas getting on camera every day talking about male. That's all you You want to sit here and make me look a certain way, boy? When a some ain't your fool. Some Derek Fisher done open your door to your house. <laughs> Derek Fisher got your key to your truck. Get some gas money so you can pick them kids up. Yeah, now what you do, you want to sit on TV and act like y'all perfect and you can't respect when a man tell you you wrong, bro. Well, let, let the gloves come off. The only joke you got is about basketball. I got a joke about your life, you punk. The you talking about, what is Derek Fisher? Is he the mentor or the stepdaddy or what? Because he your mentor too, yo. Y'all really. You want to sit online and this is what Rachel Nichols sat there and got your d to say something else again. Because see, Rachel Nich Nichols, no, I'm going to say something. I ain't got, I don't got no big podcast. You the dumb responding to a you bigger than. You stupid, you ain't learn nothing because you think you tough. A light skinned like you with some hair should be acting like Drake and tell girl. But no, you get your girl too because you want to be a you want to smoke cars all night, punk. Everybody in the world has joked on your basketball skills, bro. But these are your skills. Everybody been joking about that. One thing you can't joke about with me is my basketball skills. You haven't said nothing about that, right? So you are in control of your own basketball skills. So be mad at yourself. I was the second to last pick. You was the first pick. Who had a better career? So don't make it personal, bro. Everybody, every people joke about some things in my career. I don't take it personal, but they can't say I was sorry. They can't say I was a bus. All right, so you guys saw the exchange between Kwame Brown, Matt Barnes, and Steven Jackson. And the one thing that I find funny is the fact that Kwame Brown keeps poking fun at the fact that Matt Barnes got his girl taken from an ex-teammate in Derek Fisher. Now, if I remember the story correctly, I believe that Matt Barnes and Gloria Govan had already separated, but it was just the principle behind the thing. You and Derek Fisher were ex-teammates, and then you're going behind my back, and you're actually chilling in the house that I bought, Gloria Govan, you know, and you're basically dealing with my ex. You know, I thought we were friends. I thought we were closer than that. 
And so that's where that all stems from. And so the disrespect is real. Kwame Brown is coming out swinging. He's not taking it anymore. Now, let's go ahead and get to Charlemagne the God. So, of course, The Breakfast Club was covering this story where Kwame was going off on all the people that disrespected him publicly in the past about his basketball career. And so Kwame is from South Carolina, just like Charlemagne. So Charlemagne had, you know, started to cheerlead. And he was saying, I heard about the family. Don't mess with Kwame Brown. He's nothing to play with. His daddy did this. His brother did this. And his mom did this. So they're not the family that you want to mess with. So in my estimation, it came to me that Charlemagne was trying to stick up for Kwame because they're both from South Carolina. But ladies and gentlemen, this is where cheerleading goes wrong. Because Kwame was like, straight up. And so once Kwame Brown caught wind that Charlemagne was on the radio talking about his family, you know, he went in. And so let me play you guys what Charlemagne had to say. And then immediately following that, uh, I'll follow it up with Kwame's response. All right. So sit tight and I'll be back momentarily. Leave, let me tell y'all something. Leave Kwame Brown alone. I don't know if y'all know, but you could do a little research. Kwame Brown was born in Charleston, South Carolina. I don't think I've ever met Kwame, but I know a lot of his family. His family lived in Moss Corner, South Carolina. His father's name was Willie Brown. I don't know how many kids Willie Brown had. I don't know how many siblings Kwame Brown got, but I went to school with his sister, and I went to school with one of his, his brothers. Let me tell y'all something. Kwame's mm. father in the 90s, I remember this story. He buried an axe handle. It was his And the rumor was he buried her alive. He buried in the area that I grew up in, if I remember correctly. I've been trying to call my dad since yesterday to, to, to confirm the whole story because I literally forgot about this until yesterday, but the, the woman and he got arrested. Uh, if he's still alive, he's in prison for life because he got caught because he left South Carolina after and came back for his paycheck. Let me tell you something else. His other brother, I don't know if him and Kwame were close, but his other brother Kwame several times and then killed himself. That was like in 08. And his other brother... Kwame's other brother just went to jail for like three years ago. All of this you can Google. I'm saying all that to say, leave Kwame yeah, alone. Sure. That man has been quiet for 20 years. He don't bother nobody. Clearly all that, you know, all, all that he's a bust stuff gets to him. And you don't know what people are going through or have been through. But I've seen folks snap for less. And it looks like, you know, Kwame is snapping. And if you look at the history of men in his family, you would know his, his men in his family have a history of snapping. Leave Kwame. Oh, Steven Jackson. I mean, uh, 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 Charlemagne the Guard case guy that, uh, actually played guilty and got away with it. We're going to name you got away with it. So, so because I, I called two gentlemen that you can clearly hear on your podcast that they tapped somebody and said one, only one trade, only one person was part of the trade. You mean to tell me you're going to purport the story the way that you see fit? You want to talk about a brother that I never met, that my father had children outside of his marriage, just like DJ Envy Chiefs. So I'm wrong because my father had a son at the time that I never met. So you're going to put out to the world that like I'm some kid. When I asked these gentlemen and they said they was joking. So now it's time to light your little up too. We're going to find that girl you. Allegedly. Matter of fact, we ain't got to say alleged because you on the dock. So we're going to talk about you. Since you punk as uh, beta males that's on the breakfast club, DJ Envy, no neck having punk weasel. You just like the rest of the and all of Time. And Charlemagne, you shut your punk Because since when words became violent, taking too many marching orders from women, you dumb some bitch. In the word, in the definition of the word, it start with physical altercation, physical contact, not words. So I don't subscribe to that. So I'll see you in a minute to get YouTube, you punk. Y'all talking about somebody because they, they talking. They ain't what they saying they're going to come to L.A. or uh, Atlanta. They not. 
That's the message y'all want to put out. My daddy go to jail, so it's my fault. I told you. See how y'all want to tell the story? See, people? See how they want to tell the story? A rose that grew through the cement, I don't got nothing to do with what my daddy did. I got my own hands, my own arms, and my own brain. And you got your own body and your own... You got your own body and your own people. That allegedly, you used, you used to... Girl, you punk. You so protected, you bald head, weasel face, bleach face mother that nobody is allowing, nobody taking you off air for real. But you get up on air, uh, on camera talking about protect all women. And now a man finally calling your out. Now I'm from my truck. I'm a from my truck talking on the phone. You're on YouTube. I am certified crazy with papers. All right, so you heard Kwame Brown address the Breakfast Club and especially Charlemagne the God for speaking out on his family's past transgressions. He wasn't here for it at all. And so he called out Charlemagne the God for not being held accountable for that situation that supposedly had went down between Charlemagne and Jessica Reed, right? We all remember that story. Jessica Reed said that Charlemagne was being inappropriate. And so he basically was like, how can you still be on air? And, you know, why haven't you been held accountable for that? And then you bleached your face. And I mean, he was just going in on Charlemagne. So all in all, right, you know, this brother is not playing. This is 15 to 20 years of built up frustration, like I said earlier, and he's unleashing it on the world. He is not playing with anybody that has made any disparaging comments in regards to him and his family. And he even came at Jamel Hill. Basically, Jamel Hill was trying to butt in and he said, yo, if you're a queen, you need to stay out of this. This is none of your business, right? Just stay, you know, in your lane or whatever the case may be. And so he basically shut her down because he felt like she was trying to get into something that, you know, wasn't even involving her at all. It had nothing to do with her at all. So basically he shut her down too. came at Jamel Hill, but he was more respectable uh towards jamel which i applaud but hey you know this brother said enough is enough and i'm going in in 2021 there's nobody that's going to be able to hold me back or stop me you know i'm coming back for my respect so it is what it is but anyway guys i'm gonna let this go and let y'all have that in the comments drop down and let a brother know what you think about this whole entire situation don't forget to like 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 comment share and subscribe and i'll get with you in the next video thanks for watching peace oh my god wow all right y'all so i forgot to implement this in the original video so let me go ahead and talk about this real quick so Gilbert Arenas, he was traded from the Golden State Warriors in 2003 and he went to the Washington Wizards. So he was Kwame's teammate for about two years, right? And so he was on all the Smoke podcasts with Matt Barnes and Steven Jackson and they spoke on Kwame and things like that. So that also propelled Kwame to come out and defend himself because of that interview that Matt Barnes and Steven Jackson did with Gilbert Arenas. I'm going to play you a snippet of it and then I'll be back. I remember just talking the, uh, the previous show we just had how good it appointment was. Y'all can't, man. Nah, no, I don't say no, nothing Matt, about Matt, it. Matt, Matt was like, that was one of the you know, top number one picks they could ever, ever round, right? Yo, man, you know, I'm just saying what Matt, Matt said. Matt said was one of the covers, <laughs> one of the number, best number one picks ever of all time. So you guys heard Matt Barnes and Steven Jackson trying to be funny talking about that, you know, they heard Kwame Brown or one of them said to one another that Kwame Brown was the best number one pick to ever come to the NBA. And so on top of the podcast that they did with the Lakers owner and Jeannie Buzz, then they're going to have Gilbert Arenas on the show right after that. And then they're going to talk about Kwame again in a negative manner. And so Kwame actually said that Gilbert reached out to him after the show and they talked about it and everything was all good. Because for the most part, Gilbert, you know, his commentary on Kwame was positive, right? He was still a little shady, but he was more positive, saying the same thing that I said. If Kwame had ran into or hadn't ran into Michael Jordan and then got traded to the Lakers and had to deal with Kobe and both of those personalities, he probably would have been better off and had a more successful career. But yeah, you know, Kwame said that him and Gilbert Arenas talk behind the scenes and they're all good. There's no beef there. 
And so, you know, but that conversation along with the Genie Bus conversation is what unleashed, you know, Kwame to the world where he felt the need to defend himself. So, guys, I wanted to make sure that I put that in there, that I implemented that information in there because it was a part of why Kwame came out and started to defend himself. All right. So, guys, there you have it. I'm out of here. I hope you guys have a great day. Again, drop down in the comments and let me know what you think about this whole entire situation. Don't forget to like, comment, share, and subscribe, and I'll get with you in the next video. Thanks for watching. Peace.